There was a silence in heaven, a deafening silence in heaven. And out of the last seal of the Lamb's scroll came seven trumpets. They were given to seven angels. And the vindication prayers came before God of the saints who were martyred. Those prayers were mixed with fire and an angel threw down those to earth, causing thunder, lightning, and earthquakes. The first angel blew a trumpet and a third of the earth burned up. The second angel blew a trumpet and something the size of a mountain was thrown into the sea where a third of the sea creatures died and ships were destroyed. The third great trumpet was blown and a star called Wormwood fell from heaven into the water and many died. A fourth trumpet was blown and a third of the sun and the moon and the stars were all darkened. And then finally, an eagle was seen by all crying, woe, 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 before the last three trumpets were blown. Let's look at uh, verses 7. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The scene shifts again, this time from heaven to earth. This first trumpet blast signaled the beginning of a judgment that involved hail, fire, perhaps lightning, and blood. Blood red rain is not unknown in nature. In the spring of 1901, the daily journals contained accounts of this phenomenon, which was then being witnessed in Italy and south of Europe. The result, it was said, of the air being full of particles of fine red sand from the Sahara. This judgment resulted in the fiery destruction of one-third of the earth. The Holocaust included a third of its trees and all of its grass in Revelation. There are two explanations of how all the grass perishes, but then in chapter 9, verse 4, we read that there is grass that exists later. First, the grass may grow again, since some time elapses between these two references, or second, it may be because the grass that is green perishes now, and that is now dormant and brown will be green when the events of chapter 9, verse 4 transpire. These judgments seem to be literal, just as the plagues in Egypt were. And note the parallels with the Egyptian plagues. It could be the volcanic eruptions. It could be the raining asteroids coming out of the sky the tearing up of the sky, the rendering of the sky, of course, changing the weather patterns, bringing a complex rain, rain and hail, flaming fragments of a shattered comet, asteroid, meteor, maybe coming blood red with smoke through, through the sky, crashing on earth. Look at the result. A third of the earth was burned up. The result is going to be a blazing fire that's going to burn one third of the world. Then a third of the trees were burned up. The earth's forests are now going to be devastated and they all, the green grass was burned up. No shrubs, no grass, no vegetation, no crops. The devastation will result in the loss of wood for construction, the loss of watershed for protection, the massive death of animals, crops totally devastated, which provide food for animals which people eat as well, food directly used by us. The earth becomes devastated and the globe is scorched. God will take over and God will get involved in global warming. God will turn up the heat and God will destroy the rainforests. God will slaughter the plants and the animals. And as, as, uh, as I've said once before, if you think 
we're messing up the world, wait until you see what he does with it. And not only will their source of life be taken, but their God will be destroyed. For their God is the creation and the earth. Let's look at verses 8 and 9. Now the second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So following the blowing of the second trumpet, something like a great mountain, or the size of that, uh, that was on fire comes crashing down from heavens into the waters of one or more of the earth's seas. This resulted in a third of the oceans, perhaps a third of the ocean waters becoming blood. Whether the waters became blood or became a substance like blood or simply looked like blood is difficult to determine in the text. Literally, it could become blood. A third of the creatures living in the sea died and a third of the ships on the sea perished. As of 2021, there were about 55,000 ocean-going merchant ships registered. Imagine the shockwaves that would hit the shipping industry if 20,000 valuable ships were suddenly destroyed. No doubt will disrupt global trade. John was clearly describing supernatural interventions, not natural happenings. The only chemical difference between seawater and blood from one scientist is that blood contains an iron molecule that is absent in seawater. Perhaps the mountain-like mass, maybe it's a meteor, will provide that molecule resulting in a change in the chemical composition of these seas. Let's look at verses 10 and 11. The third angel blew his trumpet and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. So next, a great star comes. Maybe it's a meteor or a comet fell from heaven on the freshwater sources of earth. It too was on fire. The ancients sometimes used the word torch to describe a meteor shooting through the sky. It poisoned a third of the rivers and streams and many people died from drinking the poison water. Wormwood means bitter. It was the same, uh, the name of a bitter herb similar to sagebrush that was fatally poisonous to some people and was a symbol of divine punishment. This judgment recalls the bitter water that God gave the rebellious Israelites to drink in the wilderness, which the tree cast in turned sweet, as well as in the first Egyptian plague. Sometimes stars represent angels. But here something mineral seems to be in view. Some understanding that uh, only chemical differences between the seawater and the blood, uh, as I mentioned, the iron molecule. Perhaps the mountain was a meteor. Uh, it's not known, but we could speculate. So the question is, uh, what is this star? Now, I went back to uh, some books that were actually they're fictional books, but they were based on logic, based on science, of what this wormwood could be. Is it a star? Uh, is it already uh, headed towards the earth? You know, when uh, I think about the Bethlehem star, and there's been a lot of speculation in scientific studies that it was really a couple planets that came together at the right point to really shine. And the way that they, they showed the wise men to come to find the birth of Jesus, uh, the birthplace of Jesus, that um, this thing was already happening. God put this in place 
a long time ago. God doesn't have to just do things on the spur of the moment. He's perhaps put things in place already for this Revelation 8. What's more, do government officials already know the answer to that question? Traditionally, scholarly interpretation claims that the Wormwood Star, uh, Wormwood Star, sorry, would be an asteroid. Others postulate that it will poison one-third of all Earth's waters and we may not even notice it. Others believe that the star would hit without returning, uh, like an angel of God appearing in the sky with fire and light, bringing judgment in an instant. Have scientists and politicians taken extreme measures to keep this under the public radar? Is this why our recent president sanctioned a colossal increase to planetary defense? Is the Wormwood Star from Revelation 8 already headed towards Earth? Are NASA and high-level government officials aware of this? Is this why we now have a space force? Many ancient cultures and religions across the globe all point to a catastrophic planetary event that has scientists and politicians taking extreme preventative measures under the public radar. Earth is not currently prepared for the scope of an impact that may just be around the corner, and people in high places know that. Now, all of what I just said right there was out of a fictional book, uh, but you might take some of those things uh, and think about them. Uh, but what will the biblical wormwood actually be? That, that book continues on. Traditional scholarly interpretation claims it will be an asteroid. Uh, others say that it's a uh, poisoning of one-third of all the Earth's waters and the devastation of the planet. Uh, ecology might not be detectable as we might believe. It could hit suddenly and without warning, like an angel of God appearing in the sky. So those are interesting things that we could speculate, but that's all that is. Uh, that is not from the Word of God. That is from a book that's kind of speculating on what these things could be. Let's take a look at uh, verse 12. The fourth angel now blew his trumpet, and the third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that the third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. This time the trumpet blast announced judgment on a third of the heavenly bodies. Darkness is a common symbol of judgment in the Old Testament, and the day of the Lord was to be a time of darkness. We find that in Amos 5, Isaiah 13, Joel 2, and Mark 13. The darkening of the heavenly bodies predicted in this verse also serves to warn of more judgment to come. Evidently, God will cut off light from the sun, moon, stars, from the earth by one-third. The text seems to imply that God will reduce the intensity of light from these sources by one-third. Perhaps a partial eclipse or pollution in the atmosphere is in view. Such a reduction in light and consequent temperatures would have a devastating effect on the earth. Now, places in the area hit hardest by these plagues will have already lost power and deteriorated into desperation and despair. Add natural darkness to the situation and the result could be anarchy and chaos, rioting, Looting, crime would exacerbate the horrors experienced around the globe. Let's look at the last verse now. Verse 13. And then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of other trumpets that the three angels are about to to blow. And I looked, not another angel trumpet, but an eagle. John next saw on earth an eagle interrupt the angels by flying through the sky and warning those living on the earth 
to beware of the last three trumpet judgments. This could be a literal eagle, uh, translated maybe vulture from the Greek word. God has given animals the ability to communicate with people in the past. We know that back in Genesis and Numbers. Eagles are birds of prey that approach rapidly and are a sign of disaster as a symbol. Thus the eagles, a fitting herald for God's judgment to come. Another possibility is that eagle is an angel. Mid-heaven is the position of the sun at noon where everyone can see the bird. Its loud voice further guarantees that everyone on the earth will hear, hear its message. The eagle announced the last three trumpet judgments, which are also woes. They are especially bad because they have people rather than objects of nature as their targets. There are several examples of double woes in scripture. Uh, of course, in Revelation, in Ezekiel, but a triple woe announces an even worse calamity. The objects of these judgments are earth dwellers, and their judgment is partially in response to the prayers of the tri tribulation martyrs. Obviously, John was describing things from his vantage point in all of this. Now, the judgments announced by the first four trumpets are shocking and severe, that our natural tendency is to doubt their literal meaning. Of course, Revelation uses numerous symbols to communicate the future, but these symbols always point to real events. When we're tempted to water down this language, soften its severity, or over-spiritualize the interpretations, we must remember Christ's ominous words in Matthew 24. For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. So whether we take these visions as literal or more symbolic, one thing is clear. The judgments described in Revelation 8 will be so dreadful that no amount of government aid, relief efforts, or advanced preparations will be able to bring recovery. The first four trumpet judgments, like the first four seals of Revelation, form a distinct cluster. They are loud, rapid-fire blast that sees the attention of the entire world. Following these, however, three additional uh, judgments will transpire. These will be slower, longer, and even more excruciating than the previous four. <clears throat> Before God unleashes these, he will make a bold pronouncement while he has the world's attention. John describes the vision as follows. Then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to those who dwell on the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. In other words, I think the message here is, the worst is yet to come. Thank you for listening, and God bless.